So our next guest, our final guest for tonight is Tasha Dawson. And her book is called God's Masterpiece. So we were we were getting ready to call you, Tasha, because the 8.30 had come up and we didn't see you on there. But welcome to Black Authors Matter TV. Oh, you need to unmute your mic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you're yeah. out and about. That was about yeah. the thing. Where, where, where are you out here? Are you out there partying? Uh, no, <laughs> working, <laughs> still working. Still, yeah, working. still working. Okay. Yeah. Well, you are one of the authors with BK Royston Publishing, and you are also an evangelist and educator. So, just get, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, uh, well, I'm actually just, I know a lot of people may say this, just kind of stumbled upon writing. Uh, so just, you know, just been kind of a writer all throughout my life, but not necessarily professionally. Uh, so through evangelistical work, you know, writing sermons and being a youth minister and writing things for the youth, um, it's kind of always just being there uh, underlining. Um, but with the books, um, it was actually... So when I do speak um, and I talk about anytime I talk about doing missions trips, which is what my first book was about, was about a mission trip I went on to Nigeria. Um, I always have youth that ask me, how do I become a missionary? How can I do missions work? I want to go. Uh, and so it was from that a point of reference that I thought about that I said, you know what? I never had anything to read when I was younger about going to a missions trip, doing being a missionary, that was even an option. And so I just had the thought of writing the first book about something that happened while we were there. Uh, so everybody that went was actually adults, uh, but I just turned us into kids. Okay, so how did you get into doing missionary work and how did you end up going to Nigeria as your destination? Well, um, it's, I feel like if you have things that you love in life, just go after those things that you love and your destiny and purpose will find you. So I love to travel. Um, I love young people. Um, I've always been in and around education. Um, and so I was working for a nonprofit in Hampton, Virginia, uh, and we had a federal grant for teen pregnancy prevention. And so through that grant, we had to uh, have community partners in order to um, teach our program to. So it was one of those community partners that just came up to me and he was like, Tasha, you know, I'm going to Nigeria next year and we go twice a year. And I think it's something that you would really love. And at first I said, oh, no, I'm not going, you know, I don't have time. But he just kept saying, I think you'll love it. And finally, um, as our partnership continued, uh, I just said, I'll go. And with that, that one trip, I've just fell in love with it. So I've been Nigeria a couple of times, Egypt, uh, just the various places, just doing missions for you. Uh, so just partnering what you love in life and then how God is leading and guiding you and your destiny and purpose will be born. Well, I was just about, I felt like you read my mind because I okay. was going to ask what guidance or advice would you give someone who would who is maybe thinking of um, going on a mission trip? Well, the first thing I always tell people is missions is everywhere. So a lot of times people want to take huge trips, you know, to other countries. I say start local first. Um, you know, just start local first. And when you start local first, not only are you gaining skills in terms of relating with people, but you're also gaining valuable partnerships. So our um, global missions couldn't be possible without our local partnerships. So it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of coordination and logistics. So when we go, we're taking books, we're taking clothing, we're taking shoes, and we're taking cargo, a lot of weight of that. You know, So we're paying for all those tubs to go with us, to be filled with stuff to give away. So that stuff that we're getting from our local community. So when we're going, we're representing all the people who helped us to get there. So I always advise people, start local first. 
Um, there's always things that you can do at home. You know, I'm just thinking about just some things right here in the United States. You know, we're going through a heat wave right now. What a great idea just to give away popsicle or water bottles or, you know, yeah. things like that. Just think about the need that your community has and then what can you do to help? So even though I'm saying water bottles, that's also applicable to Flint, Michigan, because Flint, they see everybody in Flint still doesn't have right. you know, Don't water. Think, because it's not in the news anymore that everything is resolved. Exactly. And it's not. It's not. Uh, so there are issues, you know, all across the United States that you can get young people involved in, get them excited about to help them build up to larger missions. Um, you know, also the second thing I say too, a lot of people say, I want to go, but they're not ready to go. Get your passport, you know, get that ready, get your visa, wherever country you want to go, you know, start studying about that country. You know, what's the local language? What's the currency? What's the food? Go to the state department website okay. and see if there are uh -huh. any, um, advisories that you need to adhere to. That is exactly. So right now, I'm in Haiti. So you may say, oh, I want to go to Haiti. But right now, the U.S. government is advising all Americans don't travel to Haiti right now, you know, because it's dangerous right. and things like that. So always check that, too, before you go. And I think Great they advice. Didn't they close the embassy, the United States embassy in Haiti. Then they just close it because of the fighting yes. and what was going on there. Yes, and so they did evacuate, I think, all of their workers and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, so that's, that's another point. You know, keep abreast of where you're traveling, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how long did you stay in Nigeria? The, you know, the times that you've been, how long did you stay there? Usually we're going for about two weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah. Okay. So we're so we have a team over there of uh, pastors and uh, youth workers and a chaplain of a prison, and so we coordinate with them uh, in terms of where we're going to go and things like that. So logistics. Um, so that's important too to make sure you know that you know someone there where you're going, so that you know you're just not going there in the dark. They know the lay of the land. They know the language. They know the people. You know, um, so you want to make sure that you have people there who can assist you. Okay. Well, uh, it sounds like you had some real like, international experiences. You know, the things that, from a, not from a tourist perspective, per se, you know, from a worker perspective. Now, you said the nonprofit that you started off with was in Hampton. Uh -huh. when, where in I'm from Newport News. So where okay. in Hampton was it? And I used to live okay. in Newport Beach. So, you know, we have we have a whole Kevin Bickle thing going on here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So <laughs> I lived in Hampton for 13 years. I love that area. Oh, that okay. DMV area is something special. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, really uh, pretty there. That I mean, it's very, because of the water, it's, uh, every, water is everywhere, surrounded by water. Uh, uh -huh. on three sides was peninsula and um it's the and the weather is just so the, the summer weather is really nice yeah. you know it's, it's not too hot yeah, yeah 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 and that's what i liked about it not too hot and not too cold right so they do yeah. get snow yeah but, but normally it's not like the deeper snow you know right 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 but they do get snow and it does get cold. And uh, but it did when I when I went from there to Washington, this is it's colder. I mean, it, it's not that far north, but because that area is near the water, it it doesn't get as much of the snow. But yeah. DC was a lot colder and a lot more snow. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so the, the organization that I worked with was called um, Lighthouse Outreach. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it was a teen pregnancy prevention was our major grant. Um, and uh, so we worked on that for almost 10 years dealing with that. So we did that. We also did um, a food bank with USDA, a partnership with USDA to give food out to the community. 
um, and in other events that we had too, but that was our major funding. Okay, was it a church affiliated nonprofit or was it just strictly a nonprofit? Well, it was founded by Christ Church Ministries uh, okay. with Bishop Robert A. Baker. And um, so he is the founder of the nonprofit and then they receive federal grants. Okay. So as a, um, you're an educator as well. So you, yeah. you wear a lot of different hats. So do you, are you teaching at the, what level do you teach? Is it elementary, middle school, high school, college? Well, um, middle school is what I was teaching. Um, and normally, but with the nonprofit, we were teaching middle and high school. So we were going through the family life education classes and teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what did, when you were teaching pregnancy prevention, what was your approach? Well, our approach was abstinence. Um, and so what we were doing was checking to see if two different curriculums, which one worked the best. Um, but our approach was unique because we were not just saying no to sex, but we were saying yes to your goals and your dreams. So it's called the Dare to Dream program, saying yes to entrepreneurship. We're saying yes to, you know, planning out your future family. Um, so that was really the premise of our program. A lot of times with uh, teen pregnancy prevention, uh, a lot of times youth and teens will hear a no don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But what we wanted to do is open our eyes, open their eyes to things that they could do. So even a teen waiting two more years to get pregnant or two more years to have a child means a lot in terms of economically. It means a lot in terms of developmentally for their child, the opportunities that they had. Um, so what we were trying to do was help the teens to visualize their futures. And then if they had that vision of where their future was going, it wouldn't be as hard to, you know, abstain from sex during middle school. So believe it or not, you know, young people are having sex even in elementary school, you know. And so the longer that you can get them to wait, studies show that the greater their economic success will be, the greater it is that their chance of going to college will be, things like that. So. And I, I would say often when it comes to teaching a young person to say no to sex, we can't approach it from a shame point of view. Right. Because, um, I mean, I've, and I've, I've learned it growing up. When we approach it from a shame point of view, they'll, they're still going to do it, but they feel so bad about it. They don't tell anybody, so they don't get the help that they need to break free from it. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm really glad that um, you're looking at this in a different way. Well, you know, let's channel some of those attentions to bettering your, um, yourself or bettering your plight, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you let this get in the way, you won't be able to do, to do this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a better way of approaching that situation than to just say, oh, you, you should feel ashamed about what you're doing. Right. Right. And a lot of times, too, shame will come, especially if you're not actively engaging your child or your young person in talking about what is sex. So, you know, a lot of times parents, uh, mentors, uh, grandmothers, uh, grandfathers will wait, you know, well, I'm going to wait until they turn 16 to talk about, you know, sex. And even then, the conversation is not a full conversation. But in reality, like I said, there are girls, you know, getting pregnant in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. So if you waited until you're 16, you know, it's, it's far too long. And a lot of times that can also bring in shame and guilt because I'm, I may be active. You're not talking to me about it. And so I'm trying to hide it from you. Right. Uh, but yeah. We also talked about um, STDs. Uh, with the young people as well, as far as avoiding, you know, uh, risky behaviors to avoid STDs. And with one of our partners, they went in and talked to kids about HIV and AIDS. And when I asked them, I said, what's the youngest class that you've ever taught? She said kindergarten. Mm. 
you know. So, you know, they're seeing images on social media, they're seeing it on TV, you know, but we're waiting very, very late to talk to our kids about it. So by the time, if you're waiting until they're in high school, they already have seen a lot of stuff going on in school. They've already seen a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I'll just say, I'll use this as an example, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Real Housewives of New York, Potomac, you know, they've already seen a lot of stuff. And so their image of what sex is, what it's supposed to be, and I'll say this, a healthy relationship has already been formed by what they see on TV. Because you, as their role model, you as their parent, haven't been open as far as talking to them about it and releasing that shame and that guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, those I think relationships on yeah. those shows are not examples of healthy relationships. I've only right. seen like <laughs> clips of, of a few of them because to me, it's just so, it's just so over the top ghetto. I'm sorry. But anyway, I just can't, I can't. I, I, this is not something I want to see. And, but the thing about girls that's different for boys, girls, get emotional they think they're in love or they think a boy will love them or like them more if they have sex and that's never been true ever in the history of, of young teenagers or children no he's just trying to get what he wants and move on that's what the, that's what he's trying to do I mean and I don't fault him for wanting to do that because that's what his body's telling him but the girl is the one that's going to be stuck with the problem. She can't right. move on. And so that's why it's just so important she's for never, her to have a she's never been taught how to take control of those emotions and those right. feelings. If she's never been taught how to empower herself, then she's always going to be a victim to sexual feelings. Right. Yeah. Right. And you have, like you said, you, you all show them what their future can look like. Because right. a lot of times they haven't thought about, well, if I do this, it's going to derail. I won't be able to go to college or I won't be able to even play sports. I mean, it's, right. it's, you know, your whole life will be the trajectory of your entire life will be changed. And the other thing is, if you have a baby as a young girl, let's say 14 or 15, the chances that you're going to have another one as a right. teenager are almost a hundred percent. I mean, it's, right. you know, once that cycle starts, it's hard to stop it. So it's better to, nobody's saying never have sex because it's part of life, but right. just wait until you're ready. And you're not, you're not ready at, as a teenager, really. Definitely not in middle school or high school. You're just not emotionally, you're not ready. You might think, and if you're thinking this is going to make, uh, I, just, I hear teenage girls say this is just, I'm, I'm like, wow, I just, I wish people had more information, but they're thinking that'll make him closer to me, or that'll make him have to be involved in my life. No, no. That means you're going to have his kid that he probably won't see or see very sparingly, and it'll be your responsibility and your whole right. life. So. They need some reality, you know, it's just, just a real real talk. I think Gwen feels very strongly about this issue. You know, <laughs> I, I talked to my daughter about this, and you know, good. she and I put a book together called oh, good. Hey, and it was 12 life-changing principles for, for teen girls. And two of the chapters, one of the chapters is teenage boys are not dependable. That's just a fact, and they need to know that. It's not a knock on the boy. That's how his development is. He's not thinking past today or tomorrow or whatever. It's just not. And girls might be thinking about the future, the wedding, the house, making home, having a baby. You know, we think more like, I don't, well, I don't know what these young girls are thinking now, but I'm just saying what we used to think about, you know, the future with him. He's not necessarily, most likely not thinking about that. So, right. We have to just give them a reality check, you know, but lovingly in a loving way. <laughs> right, right, 
right, right. Well, they will ruin their lives because that you know this stuff is it ruins your life. I mean, you love your baby once you have it, but it changes your whole life if you right. have it when you're really not ready. Right, right. So I applaud you for doing this work and you did it for so many years, uh, hands on. You were in, like in the field. Just, you you're, know. you're in there, in there. Yeah, in there. Ms. Yeah. Tasha, what's, what's next for you? What else do you have planned with, with this platform? Well, um, so with Impact Kids, I'm very grateful for my publisher, Julia Royston. Um, so I actually knew her for uh, many years, but I didn't know. I moved to Virginia and I saw her at one of my friend's book signs. And so I had no clue that she had went on to be a publisher. And so when I saw her, I told her, hey, you know, I've had an idea for a book. And she said, give me a call. Well, it was two years before I ended up calling her. And when I called her, she said, what took you so long? You know, and I said, <laughs> you were so waiting for me? Yeah, I said, you were waiting for me? <laughs> and she was like, I've been waiting for you, you know. And so I was very excited about that. So I published my first book. And then um, I had published my second book. Um, and then it's platformed out. So now I have my own uh, children's boutique. So it's called Impact Kids Boutique. And so it's really just been growing um, as far as the impact kids and what we're doing. Um, and then I just had someone approach me and ask me, do I write lessons uh, for youth groups? So for like VBS or like a VBS kid or something like that. And I told them that I would work on trying to get something together for them. So really just kind of everybody says, you know, they'll ask me, well, what is your business plan? And I just tell them, I pray. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> I said, because honestly, you know, if you would have asked me, are you going to be, it was never in my mind to be a children's book author. It was never in my mind to be an author, to be a business owner, anything, you know, um, but I do am natu naturally an adventurous person, you know, so I like new things. I like adventure. Uh, I pray. So I, you know, leading on God's guidance, you know, as far as what I feel like he wants me to do. And then I also keep close connections with friends and family. So, you know, so I'm kind of listening to what are people needing right now? What's some more areas that they would like uh, to be engaged in? Or, you know, what's some books out there that they need that they don't have? Um, and just, just take it from there. So right now, um, just, you know, continue with my shop. And like I said, working on those lessons plans for that youth group. Uh, but who knows, you know, the sky is no longer the limit. We've learned that. Now we can go even past the sky. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, we can go past the sky. So um, when was the last time you were in Nigeria? And do you plan to go again? Or do you plan any other mission trips to other countries? Yes, I do plan to go. So we were actually going in March of 2020. And oh, we man. were going and we started hearing some of the reports of uh, just things happening around the world and we had bought our tickets and everything so we were going at the end of March and finally we just decided let's just wait to see because we didn't know what was happening uh, and we said well we'll wait let's put it out to June and of course we couldn't go in June either because of COVID so we haven't been back yeah so but we are planning to go March 2024 yeah. okay all right and the same yeah same uh length of time same yeah. Yeah same. yeah, same with the time. And it's just so rewarding to go. You know, I think everybody needs to travel out of the country. I uh, you just, yeah. I agree. I agree. Say that again. Okay. We, we both agree. We both agree. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a whole different know. world that you get to be exposed to. And you realize that your country is not the be all and end all of the entire world. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And depending on what country you go to, you're so grateful for the things that you have, you know, grateful for um, you are able to go to school, you know, and not have to pay to go to school. Right. You know, so, so in Nigeria, they have to pay school fees to go. And if they can't pay those fees, they can't go to school, you know. 
so, you know, when you do travel, as I said, that exposure is bar none. It also, I think, stimulates your creativity. You know, so if you are thinking about writing or want to write a book, take a trip. You know, yeah, there's yeah. nothing like it. Um, you know, I often tell people I'm most creative when I've had rest and when my <laughs> mind is at ease. But when I'm stressed and it's a lot of things going on and I feel overwhelmed, it's hard for me to be creative. You know, so if you're thinking about writing a book, take a trip. You know, go somewhere, relax. Take your pen, take your laptop, your iPad, whatever you want to do, uh, because that's when I think the creative juices really start flowing and, you know, you can write. Well, that's good advice Yeah, for people, because I don't, I, I don't know if people can be creative under stress or not. I don't know if there's like a hormone or one of those things that's emitted in your body that stunts your creativity if you're stressed out. You know, it probably is some science behind it. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So um, with your Nigeria, where did you go in Nigeria? Which? Uh, so we went Nigeria? to, well, we went to Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Okay. Port okay. Harcourt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everywhere in Nigeria is going to be. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, you know, a lot of people don't, realize too you know all of those nigeria is its own country you know so africa yeah. is made up of many many many, many countries many. so yeah. yeah so you could go to ghana and have a completely totally different experience than when you go to nigeria or when you go to south africa or egypt or you know um so it's its own culture its own people you know its own food you know mm -hmm. so um it's just great yeah. yeah, a lot of people reference Africa like Australia. Australia yeah. is a country and a continent. Africa is not. It's, it's a not. continent with many, exactly. many countries. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. a lot of people kind of treat it like it's one thing. And it's many, many, many cultures there. Right, right. Well, we're at the end of our interview, Tasha. We want to make sure people can get your book and your website is tashadawson.com correct yes and that will direct you also to theimpactkids.com theimpactkids.com and so on that website is uh clothing from my store uh gifts accessories the books and also uh the latest news and what we're doing at our store so theimpactkids.com and also of course you can order the books on amazon Okay, well, I also put that in the chat as well. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And you continue to do your good works and have a great evening. All right. Thank you so much for having me on. I loved it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. And I enjoyed having you. Thank you so much. All right. Me. Thank you. Uh,